So welcome to this uh, short movie about how to how to find a topic for your thesis. Uh, this is one of the the hardest parts for for uh, many students uh, in uh, well at the start of the course. Uh, so we'll try to to give you some 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 tips and tricks and, and hints for how to to approach this. Uh, I know that that some of you already have a topic and it's it's uh, developed and 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 processed you some for some even together with the supervisor uh, but um, if you look at the course objectives uh, find a solution to a research problem in computer science well this this puts a a, a rather uh, high standard uh, on on the the topic uh, you select uh, it's important that that you find a project where we can actually uh, use that project uh, to make sure that you you meet the course objectives and uh, if the topic is is uh, too simplistic uh, for instance if you have a company that you're talking to right now and and that company asks you to develop well an application that is that is just too simple uh, developing software is not a problem for you uh, at this point in, 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 in your education. This is the final project and you should be able to, to uh, demonstrate that you individually can, can uh, do more than just implement, that you can actually process a problem, that you can find relevant information, that you can, that you can approach the problem solving part in a structured manner and, and also assess uh, your results in a way that you make sure that, that the results are valid and, and uh, useful, uh, applicable uh, to, to the problem you have at hand. It's also important that you're able to, to demonstrate that you can, you can uh, communicate uh, orally and, and in, in written text. So, so uh, it's a pretty uh, complex uh, set of objectives and, and, and that is, uh, of course, uh, has uh, consequences for for the the topic uh, you select. Um, so often when 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 I talk to students, I, I I divide it into three parts, and and it's important to find the right challenge, and 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 the challenge is is not a problem. A challenge uh, typically consists of multiple problems, multiple. Uh, sub challenges, if you prefer that. Uh, what's important, given that you you should work with this for for the next twenty weeks, more or less, and you will work a lot on this topic. Well, the first criteria is, of course, that it's interesting to you. Uh, that makes life a lot easier. If if you find something that is interesting to you, you are it's more likely that you're willing to invest the the, the time required. The second criteria is that the challenge should be relevant. It should be relevant not just to you, but it should re be relevant from two perspectives, from a societal perspective and from a scientific perspective. The third criteria, which we will not touch upon in this uh, short recording, is the scientific quality. That has uh, something to do with the standard of, of how you approach uh, your your thesis topic. We will say much more about that in 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 the part two of of uh, these four lectures. So, what are you interested in? The first criteria. Well, the best way to 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 address this of, is of course to start to ask yourself questions. Are you interested in uh, the area of network security? Well, focus on the area of network security. If you're interested in AI, deep learning, for instance, well, you should focus on that area. But it's important because this is not a learning process in the same way as a regular course. Interested is not just the criteria you should use. You should also be knowledgeable to some extent. So if you select deep learning, don't select it because you're interested only, you should also be knowledgeable in it, which means that you can work with it. Uh, you don't have the time to learn 
a complex uh, technique like deep learning uh, in these 90 weeks and address a problem in that area. So be knowledgeable in the area you select. Then when you have an area, you have to start look into that area. And you can do that primarily by, by checking out different uh, sources of, in, in literature. And of course you have scientific literature, which is important in this context, but you also have the what people refer to as gray literature, uh, non-peer reviewed uh, literature such as blogs, uh, white papers, uh, uh, articles and web pages, etc. So, so pick an area and then start digging into the the sources uh, you find online. Uh, the scientific ones you can find at the library databases or just go, uh, Google Scholar, for instance, uh, or any other similar database. And then the gray ones, well, just uh, search uh, the web, and well. You have to pick the right search strings, of course. So, so if you uh, pick your area, uh, then maybe just add challenge or problem or something like that. Well, then you can quickly, rather quickly, uh, find something. So just an example for deep learning. Uh, I did this little exercise. Deep learning is not my topic. Uh, so I, I tried to put myself in your sit, uh, situation. So, so I did a uh, search for deep learning and, and uh, challenges. And then, well, I found how may we guarantee data quality in deep learning applications? How may we address biased data in deep learning? Uh, what about deep learning for high volume, high velocity and high variety data? So, so three challenges. Some of these challenges, well, well it's not something that I can address in 19 weeks, but it frames some some aspect of, of the area you're interested in. And, and it will be a guide that uh, to that points out a path for you to to further explore. Uh, keep in mind that it's extremely important at this point that that you are really sure that you have the knowledge to work with these challenges. So process this uh, using paper and pen. Uh, well, if you prefer to, to, to have a notebook on your, your uh, computer or uh, tablet, of course, just, but just write down two, three sentences describing the area first. So two, three sentences describing network security or the sub area of network security you're interested in or the same for deep learning or API design or whatever area you pick. Uh, then try to phrase your challenge as a single sentence. If you, your challenge requires more than one sentence, well, it's complex. Uh, so maybe you can divide it or focus it even more. So try to write one sentence for the challenge. And don't forget to, to, to start collecting the references uh, that you have used uh, in your uh, search for, for a challenge. The second part is, is the relevance. And, and this is important because, because uh, what you do now should be motivated uh, from two perspectives, from a scientific perspective and a societal perspective. Uh, same thing here. You go into the literature and you look into the scientific in gray Scientific is typically best for, for, for the scientific perspective, of course, and the gray you often find the societal relevance. So what you should do here is, is try to answer the question at the bottom of this slide. Can you motivate the challenges? Some challenges lean more towards the scientific, which means that you can motivate it from a scientific perspective quite easily. It could be a knowledge gap or something like that. However, some challenges are more on the societal side and maybe less uh, scientific. But but it's important that you have both perspectives because if it's only societal, 
well, it doesn't meet the the prerequisites for the for the thesis project. So so try to balance. Try to find something where you at least have some motivation from from one of the perspectives, and then you may uh, be more uh, have, well find more relevance from from the other. But both should be covered. Uh, if you look at the the scientific challenges uh, well it can be that you uh, in your searches uh, in the scientific literature or you can also find this in gray literature that you can find like contradictions so one art article says a and another one says not a that is actually a very nice motivation for dwelling into that challenge why do we have contradicting statements? Another one is, is of course, the gap. There is something missing. You have been looking into the literature and you think that there is some piece, some area, sub area in, in this, this, this challenge that is not covered. A twist to that is also uh, the facet because it could be that some piece in the puzzle uh, is covered but you think that there is a perspective a facet of that piece that is not uh, properly investigated so you can use contradictions you can use gaps and facets to 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 further uh, motivate why your challenge is relevant from a scientific perspective coming back to this and now we'll look at the societal one if you look at the societal perspective well there are of course a a lot of different perspectives uh if you if you take a standpoint of society but but uh when since we're dealing with some some aspect of, of software software development or the impact of software in society here well you can start looking for uh if your challenge can help uh characterizing an artifact a process a product a service uh, from the perspective of society or can your work contribute to the understanding of a process, an artifact, a product or service? Can your work contribute with something that support a process, an artifact, a product or service in society? And can you, of course, well, improve processes, artifacts, products, services relevant to society? If you think in terms of, of characterization, understanding, supporting, improving, well, then you can motivate. Remember that society here can be software developers. They are part of society. You come from the scientific perspective, you move into society. Because if, if software developers situation improves, so to speak, if you improve a process or if you improve an artifact, well, that might may lead to improvements for the whole society because maybe it helps developers to to uh, uh, verify the the correctness correctness of the software they develop something like that so how do you deal with the uh, relevance well take up your your challenge node and add couple of sentences add some more references and and uh, well you gradually develop your challenge description iterating over the 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 challenge cards uh that you have in your notebook or or on your computer and at some point you have a couple of challenges that you can bring uh to the workshops and, and discuss with, with the, the supervisors. And I think that this is a structured approach that can 
help you at least take the first steps on the path towards a thesis topic. So what should you do now? Well, start identifying areas, start detailing them by, by looking into to the literature, see if you can find some, some challenges, uh, add the, the motivation to, to motivate the relevance of the challenge. And for your own sake, maybe you should rank them, prioritize them. And at the end of the day, uh, you can pick one uh, after consulting the supervisors uh, for the course uh, uh, so that you get the best one, not just from your perspective, but from uh, the perspective of the uh, learning outcomes. So uh, that was the first part uh, of this uh, selecting a thesis topic or developing a thesis topic. Uh, next lecture, we'll focus more on the scientific quality.